that we're on. Welcome to Heck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's Radio Heck 82, which is um, based in Anaheim, California. And I have the pleasure and the honor of uh, being here with uh, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Uh, did I pronounce it correctly? Thaw or Thaw? Oh, Thaw. Thaw, Sorry. okay. Yeah. yeah, the famous guitarist who is known, you know, uh, around the world, and um, especially, I think, from the band GNR. Eight uh, years with GNR, yeah. Eight years? It yeah. was that long? Yeah. Okay, this is a famous, fantastic guitar player, and I've admired your playing for many years. Well, thank you. And um, I just, you know, I, it's it's great, and uh, you know, you're a great musician and uh, composer too. I've heard your solo albums, and uh, some of my favorite songs are the ones that you wrote. Uh, I like your normal, abnormal albums. <laughs> nice, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely, and I've seen videos of Ron uh, playing guitar, and it, it you know it's incredible uh, to watch how you play and um, the skill you know that you have mastered uh, is you know it's mind blowing to people who know nothing about guitar, <laughs> but I know a little bit of, about guitar. So um. as long as people enjoy it, all good. <laughs> whether it's fancy or not fancy, whatever it is, if people like it. Song. And they do, and they do. They love watching you perform. I hope so. They love the music, they love the songs, uh, they like Bumblefoot, you know. I hope. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really, really happy to have the opportunity to, to be here on Axes and Anchors Cruise. Yeah. How are you liking at, uh, the cruise? Ah, it's been good. It's been. went fast. You know, it, it actually did. Four days. Of just wherever you go, there's there's just amazing guitar players doing stuff. Whether it's workshops or concerts or just anything, you're just surrounded. If you love guitar, then this is definitely the place you would want to be. It's you know it's very guitar centric. It's it's completely. You know, where else are you gonna see Zach Wilde and Ingve and Marty Friedman and Jeff Watson and, and just I mean, everybody? And wherever you go, there's something happening. At all hours, I'm talking like from 9 a.m. to 5 a.m. non-stop. So I've been seeing yeah. a lot. I've been doing yeah. a lot, and I, <laughs> yeah, and it's it's been a lot. It's been good. And you know, it, it's absolutely true. And I I wanted to make sure that I brought an instrument along. So I brought a traveler guitar. Yeah. I'm so happy I did, and I just picked up a lot of information and um, about techniques of playing guitar and uh, from the different maestros that have been here and have been performing and so giving workshops. Have you, which workshops did you get to see? Which ones? Well, um, I, I made sure to catch almost all of them. Good. So I did catch your cool. morning workshop and um, I got the chance to see you play a couple of my favorite songs right up close. You know, um, and uh, well, I caught the Ingvay Mountain workshop, I caught nice. Zach Wild workshop, nice, nice. which he uh, put on with Dario Lorena. And um, I saw, you know, Gilby Clark, also oh, from cool. GNR. Yeah, and yeah. And he talked a lot about the band this morning and told his, his stories to us about um, what, it, what it was like being picked up. And, uh, by the band GNR and what he felt like when he, you know, got a call, like he, he that he was the new guitarist, and then the the run of his the run of his uh, career with the band, and then the, and then the the end of his career with the band, and he's you know he's also out giving concerts that are incredible right oh, he's now. Great. He's great. Yeah. And and which you guys do, and I I've, uh, I've seen a few of them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, his own stuff is fantastic. It's really cool. His songs are cool. Yeah. He uh, he played a few of them for us this morning, and um, you know, just a lot of character to them. So, well, that's something I wanted to talk about is uh, the ca the characters of 
the guitarists that have played with Guns N' Roses. And uh, you're all these incredible individuals, uh, incredible guys that are like, even even character uh, performers for people who, who idolize um, the images, you know, what, what you are uh, in the band. So, um, and, and it's like, oh, that's my favorite one, you know. <laughs> well, you know, I think just anywhere in, in life you're going to find certain people that you just feel a connection to for whatever reason whether it's musically personality or just something about their vibe that that you just feel like yeah that's someone i would love to just hang with a lot <laughs> all the time and it's different for everybody you know and that's you know that's with every band i mean you know growing up myself you know with kiss and the beatles in the in the 70s you know, be you look at each one and be like, you know what? I would love to just hang out and jam with him, but I'd love to just hang out and chat with him or whatever it is. You just something about each member. But what's beautiful is when they all come together. They each yeah. have something the other doesn't, and the sum of what they do is just immense. And it's something really special that would never be the same if it wasn't those individuals coming together, those ingredients making exactly. it happen. I, I think what you're touching on is like contemporary artists. Well, I mean, yeah. everybody, like, you know, not just contemporary, like any, yeah, I mean, whether it was GNR or, or you know, just and any not band. only that, but the Page, Plant, uh, the, the time that we're in right now, the decade, and, and looking back at the the influences that, that all of you share, that we all share, you know, like you like you said, like Led Zeppelin, you know, um, and the Who, and the Who. Sabbath, and yes, Sabbath you know, definitely, uh, Randy Rhodes, you gotta mention, oh, you know, yeah. so. Yep. Um, Daisley and Randy, and yeah, we all share just this love and of um, you know rock music history and metal, metal history, you know, which you're part of. And um, I want to compliment your contribution to, to, to uh, my favorite album of all, my favorite Guns N' Roses album, Chinese Democracy. Is that one your favorite? Really? It is. And, um, you know, it's like, I grew up listening to this music and oh. these bands and, um, and I've seen how the music has developed, and I think that that was a really nice development for the band GNR to kind of come into this Chinese Democracy album. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what it was like for you? Um, you know, it was interesting that album. I, I, when it came out, when it was all done and everything, you know, I tend to always use the Beatles as some kind of reference. You know, they were my first musical love. And I'd say, like, you know, this album reminds me of this, this album reminds me of that in the stage of the Beatles' lifespan. I always kind of use that as a, some kind of gauge for things. And to me, like, when Chinese came out, I was like, you know what, this is kind of like the White Album to me. Like, that's how it felt to me. Uh, like it was, it was Gino's White Album. Kind of monumental album. in a way. Eh? Like it was sort of experimental and... Mm -hmm. and really classic, uh, maybe? Introspective. I found it to be like very, you know, there's something very personal about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was, I mean, there, there will never <laughs> in the history of rock music be an album like that one that has contributions from such an array of people that, that was so different and each one brought in something really special to it. You know, there was mm -hmm. a lot of people that added a lot of great stuff to that album. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, um, I might ask, you know, where were you prior to um, your your time with Guns N' Roses? Ah, before Guns. Let's see. Well, how far do you want to go back before Guns? How many decades <laughs> well, um, back? Well, how is it that you're so... Most recently, like, what was I doing? That you're such from? an amazing player. And I've seen you on these double neck guitars that are, like, these beautiful instruments that it just looked to me, you know... Like pieces of, you know, I don't know, like of art. <laughs> it's a nice guitar, yeah, yeah, yeah. The company is Vigier Guitars, V I G I E R. Uh, they're from France, right around Paris, and they've been around for about 35 years. And 
It was 1997, I was doing a tour. At the time, uh, I wasn't looking for any kind of guitar endorsement. I built my own guitars or modified or whatever it was. I just kind of had my own little creations that I felt very connected to and bonded with and I was not looking for any kind of endorsement or anything. And they brought one of their reps, came to, uh, to one of my shows and, and brought one of their guitars and said, here, try it. I was like, no, no, I don't want to try anything. I just want to keep using what I have. And, they, and he's like, stop being stubborn and just try it. I was like, fine. And, and the thing just played so good. It was, mm -hmm. it just sounded, it felt Smooth. great on the hands. And I was like, mm -hmm. all right, I, I got to talk to them. I mean, we got to come up with something here. So I met with Patrice, the owner of the company. We went out to dinner and just had a, you know, we just connected really well. Wonderful guy. The, Everyone in Vigier, just absolutely wonderful. We've been family for now about 19 years. We've been doing this. And really? they were kind enough to uh, entertain my odd ideas as far as guitars go. I mean, they have their own line of guitars, which are beautiful. Uh, they make great stuff. <laughs> but they were also willing to make some personal stuff for me as well. Is that about the first and moment that you played a double neck? Guitar decided to really uh, pursue that. They were they were making the fretless guitar, uh, but nobody was really jumping on it. And I remember I went to a NAM show, and I saw the thing there. I was like, oh, give me one of these. I gotta use this. Mm -hmm. I gotta come mm -hmm. up with things. And, mm -hmm. and immediately, you know, took it home and just started writing songs for it, and and just really getting getting to know the just what you can do with it. Mm -hmm. and started recording a lot of stuff. In like fact, one of the first things I recorded with it uh, ended up being the theme song for that metal show. Well, that's yeah. right, the, the metal show, we love the theme song, we love the show. And that was one of the first All things I wrote and recorded too. with that guitar. That was so fun. Yeah, great show, mm -hmm. great show. Mm -hmm. So, after years of having a fretless and I would have to choose between either playing the fretless for a song or playing fretted, Finally, about seven years ago, we hmm. did the, the double neck so that I can, you know, bring it all together at once and, and be able to do everything I want to do. So, yeah, so we started doing that double neck guitar in 2009. And, uh -huh. yeah. So and I that's, used that a that's lot. the story of yeah. the double neck. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I started using it, in, you know, on Chinese democracy, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. once it was time to tour for that album. And I needed something where I could kind of do it all, do my fretless stuff that I, I made for that album, plus do whatever else needed to be done. So I kind of needed to have a, that double neck. And, uh -huh. yeah. and it's, well, I don't, you know, and I've seen a, like Cheap Chick perform with these guitars that uh, Rick Nielsen and they with five, five necks or, yeah. or something, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know you have the skill necessary to you know to even compose uh, songs for for a double neck where there's a fret, the fretless guitar and then there's a fretted guitar and um, so it's fantastic. Cool. So but, yeah, back to your question, what was I doing before yeah, guns? Are you, so, you know, were you educated at a university? Or, how uh, did you become okay. so smart? Well, <laughs> I'm not that smart. <laughs> um, <laughs> So let's say right before Guns, mm -hmm. um, I was putting out albums, uh, doing all the you know record label stuff myself. Had distributors and and doing everything, putting them out, and touring, doing all of that. I was making music for video games, for TV shows, for indie films. Mm. Uh, I had just bought a second house that I was using just as a studio. I gutted it and I didn't live there. It was just a place where bands could crash out and record 24 hours a day. So I had about 10 bands in there rotating, just doing different albums and producing them. Uh, I was teaching at a university. I was an adjunct professor at SUNY Purchase College, oh, teaching really? music production. Oh, wow. Uh, so I had all this going on. Uh, I was making music for publishing libraries that needed hip hop music, they needed punk, they needed metal, all kinds of stuff. And this music ended up on everything from Oprah to So You Think You Can Dance to, I mean, just every day I turn on the TV and hear something. It's like, oh, that's my thing. Oh, so, wow. so really busy doing a lot of <laughs> stuff. Um, so I was doing all of that and everything was, was growing. Everything, you know, inch by inch, each aspect of what I was doing was, was moving up, moving forward. <laughs> and then uh, 
Joe Satriani recommended me to Guns in 2004. And it wasn't until 2006 oh, really? that we actually really? came together and did something. It's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and at first I was, I was really, I was reluctant because I did not want to give up everything that I was doing that I'd spent my life working towards and I really loved. Uh, I didn't want to give those things up and I knew that there wouldn't be enough time to, you know, I couldn't teach a semester at a college while being on the road somewhere in Europe, you know, just... Right, right. And so, balancing family life uh, too? That too. Uh, yeah. I had to. That too, yes. <laughs> All the normal human living stuff, uh, and I sort of had this this balance going. I was able to juggle everything, and I knew that once GNR came into it, it was like I had the juggling act, and then it was like this big, you know, ten-ton bowling ball that I had to add to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so at first, uh, it was no, and then a year and a half later, we. we Give it another shot and said, you know, want to give it a try and, and I was like, all right. And we met up in New York and jammed and, and then hit that the road. Oh four. Yeah. And this is, uh, what are we? 2016. So it's been. It was 12 years ago that we first spoke and, and first okay. started talking about doing it. Yeah. But it wasn't until about a year and a half after that that they had a tour and 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 that we. Uh, got back in touch. They reached out again and and, and yeah, give it a shot. And it was I, what, give it a shot for eight years. What impresses me a lot uh, about Ron Ball is is how hard working you are. And um, it's not work. Well, <laughs> it's all not. the time playing and really, um, it's you know uh, diligent. But um, I know you just uh, it seems you inspire a lot. To a lot of things and uh, have this world consciousness also where I've followed some of your, your travels, you know, I'm like where is Ron? <laughs> yeah, right we could now. go oh, you're somewhere opposite side of the planet. Kind of remote um, dot on the globe and I'm like, how does Ron get from one place to another? And um, it's is that really what your passion is, is is traveling to these, you know, um, these wonderful places that not For everyone sure. has even heard of. Yeah, I mean, I go everywhere. You know, like I'll be in London, and then I'll be in Pakistan, and then I'll be in Thailand, and then I'll be in, you know, back in New York, and then be, you know, it's a whole world, and and you know, there are wonderful people everywhere, and you got to see them all. You know, I don't want to leave anybody out. So, so very, you you really appreciate um, culture. You know, diverse cultures, sure, yeah. and really try and contribute and um, and interact with with these you know people around the globe. Sure, and it's just sharing your music, it's sharing your love and passion for guitar playing, and it you're a great um, charitable uh, donor as well. I've seen you working with children's funds and um, just really reaching out to people um, everywhere. So there. Something you want to mention? Uh, oh. oh God, there's so many. Yeah. Uh, you know, we gotta help each other everywhere. <laughs> you know, there, there's <laughs> there, there's no exclusions. Uh, everybody can can use help. I need help. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So you just go where you can. You do what you do, and you try to put it towards a greater good. You know, I've been doing this over 40 years now. Started young. Uh, getting old and you know I wanted to be something that makes a difference in people's lives not just entertainment uh, and any way you can do that you know it's wonderful you know that that's the best part of being a musician is, is not just making people happy for the moment but when you could do something that is really going to change the direction of their life for the better you know if it's gonna put clothes on a kid's back or whatever it is or or so, yeah. give them a, a you know the the right encouragement to play an instrument or play a, a sure, guitar, and, and then just channeling you know you know their energy towards something you know that that's artistic. In, just providing um, inspiration, uh, encouragement, teaching, and, and of course um, contributing to, to charitable um, char charitable organizations. <laughs>
sure. So, so yeah, so a week ago, mm -hmm. it was in Thailand. Uh, they have a big bike week out there. It's kind of like a Sturgis kind of thing. Uh, so I played it last year, and the whole thing is for, for a kids' charity that all the bikers run called Jester's Care for Kids. And here's the music! <laughs> so... Come here! Hey! Come over here! I'm doing an interview! Come on! I'm gonna introduce you to my friend Jeff Watson. Look into the camera! <laughs> Ooh, just Jeff Watson from Night Ranger. Hello, Welcome. From, from, from many things. Yes, Night Ranger the being, being one of many of years of, of giving people wonderful music. Yes, yes. How are you? I'm good. I had a massage. Did you? How was it? I'm rejuvenated or something. My legs feel better. My knees don't hurt as much. But that's oh my good. God. Nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't. I'm not by, I didn't know where I was going. So I'm just wandering. And yeah. you're here. Cool. So yeah, hang out here until everyone comes together and we'll just keep okay. on doing what our fans. Yes. Okay. So you're, so you're also enjoying Axis and Anchor's cruise? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. nice to see you here and uh, get to hear you play. And uh, these uh, two guitarists have you know, contributed greatly to the Randy Rhodes Remembered Show. And um, this, this incredible show that lasts into the wee hours of the morning. <laughs> and everyone is- Yeah, um, literally, the wee just, hours. Just stunned yeah. by uh, the music. It's so great. So, um, yeah, when did, when did we finish? What was it, about 3.30 in the morning that yes. we finished the first <laughs> night? Well, I went on to play with you at 3.15. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, you, we first got on at 3.15. 3.15, and three, we were off at 3.30. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then doing workshops a few hours later in the morning. Yes, yes, yes. Both of us different mornings. Yes, it was, uh, yes, it's interesting. I actually <laughs> feel like it's been really beautiful and fun and also like work in a nice way though. Musical work is never bad. Yes. Musical work is never bad, right? It's hard to even yeah. call it work. <laughs> I, yeah, right. That's why they call it playing music, not working music, right? True, true, true. I like that, I like that. So awesome. You guys are awesome. And, so um, good. you know, and we all love uh, the music of Randy Rhodes. Yes. And um, I think we were talking a little bit about how how cool it is that all of us share that, you know, in a contemporary way. As an artist that inspired and influenced a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Uh, Randy Rose. So. Absolutely. Hear, uh, yes. You know, Ozzy's songs performed by different players from so many different bands. You know, it's really yeah. cool. Yeah. It is, it is. I think we gotta scream over the music now. Yeah. Um, Hello. Yeah, I got my first Marshall because of Randy Rhodes. Uh, it was, you know, Blizzard just came out and I heard that sound. I was like, I gotta get that sound. And I tried to make a vibrato bar for my <coughs> guitar using the, this yeah. like, it was like this screw with the, these other, uh, the, like, it worked. And then I remember I went to my guitar lesson. I was like, "Look what I made! I gotta, sh you know, show my guitar teacher." And I hit it, and I, and and like the spring snapped, and the whole thing broke. And he was just like, "Oh, dude!" And I, I was just so bummed. I was like trying to fight the tears. I was 11 years old, 12, and I just built, you know, a, a floating bridge, you know, just out of like little just tinker toys and, and stuff. And it, and it worked. And, and then it so snapped on it. That's so inventive, man. I love that. I but, love that yeah. kind of story. I went, I got a, a Super Distortion pickup, put it in, uh, got an MXR Distortion Plus, and got a 212 Marshall Combo. And yeah, that was it. Because of Randy Rose when I heard Blizzard and then Diary. Yep. I saw the, I saw, I saw Ozzy at Day on the Green. And I wasn't, I didn't follow and listen to bands so much. And I um, was off doing my thing. We were just gotten signed, and so we were doing our own record and stuff. And I saw this kid come out, and he played so beautifully. And he was so nice to me backstage, and he just had this presence up there. He was so confident. He was getting that tone, those nice squeals on the notes, and he was just putting in the right things at the right times. 
And I learned more about Randy after working with Bob Daisley, who I started a band with later on, called Mother's Army, right? Oh, uh, uh, with Bob and Joe Lynn Turner. Uh, and Bob, turns out, wrote all the songs with Randy Ferrazzi. So yeah. that's what got me, you know, got me listening to it, because we were going to perform a couple live, and I started listening to the lyrics. And I said, who wrote this? And Bob goes, I, I wrote the lyrics, and Randy wrote the music. And it, Oh, wow. So I really got more deeply into working with the guy that wrote it at that point. And then, of course, knowing all these people over all these years, it's a real small, close-knit family. The music music is an incestuous business, but in a positive way. Yeah. 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 Um, back to the back to you guys. <laughs> well, back to us. Um, it's really nice to hear you share that, that with us. Um, Incredible, Bob Daisley, uh, Randy One of our Woods, dearest Seth friends. Watson. He lives with me all the time. He comes in, flies yeah. in. He has his own room where he puts his shoes and his funny socks. We eat Indian food twice, a, at least twice a week. No, he's wonderful. We love Bob. Yes. Yeah. Back, back to your interview. Oh, I mean, what's your favorite thing to eat with him? What oh, do you guys get? You got a regular thing? Usually? India Palace. I have the chicken tikka kebab with masala. He has the uh, this chicken vindaloo, garlic naan. We, I mean, we used to drink the wine, but now it's just he can eat some very, very, very spicy food, mm -hmm. which I cannot. Oh, I'm okay, thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. No, but Bob is a he's a pleasure. Every morning in the in the kitchen, the toast and toast in the pro mic and veggie mic and a cup of tea, and then we go to work and make some music. And more cup of cup of tea. And, and aren't you a lucky guy? Maybe he's a lucky guy. Yeah, well. Because I okay. put up with him in the house You're like that. He, he's very <laughs> fastidious. <laughs> I'm just joking. That's cool. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> That's cool. Um, well, as long as I have your uh, your attention, what can I look forward to uh, hearing you know, this year or in, oh. in the in the near future from you guys? Okay, um, I am finishing up. Where are we? There we are. So I'm finishing up the uh, new album from from DMC Generation Kill. Now that's that's Daryl McDaniels from Rung DMC, the rapper. And Generation Kill is a metal band with Rob Dukes, formerly of Exodus, on vocals, and Rob Machete on bass, and and great bunch of guys. So they're doing this really uh, eclectic, deep rap metal album i mean when you call it rap metal it's almost it's really simplifying what this is but i started doing the production for it and adding some guitar and we're gonna finish up that album get that out as soon as i get back from the cruise uh we're hitting the studio for five weeks with art of anarchy we have a new singer and we're gonna finish up the next album for that so there we go so we're gonna get that done that's the most immediate things that are gonna happen i'm also gonna hit the road with uh Alex Skolnick and, and Portnoy and, and all those guys doing Metal Allegiance. So we're going to do that in the first week of April. We're going to do a quick run and that's going to be a blast. I can't wait. So good. And Jeff, what are you up to? Well, I, that made me tired listening to what you're going to do. So I'm going to go home and eat Indian food and write some songs. Nice, now, I'm nice. actually finishing up a, a new Jeff Watson Lone Ranger record. Nice. And I'm going to be releasing a couple of my new instrumental singles. And I'm producing another artist in the studio that you wouldn't know of at this moment. And I'm also doing the rewrite of a screenplay in a film that's going to be coming out in a couple of years. And so we're, yeah, so it's really neat. Sounds like fun. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what we do. Sounds like nice. fun. Well, good, good. Um, so there's gonna be some good things happening this good year. Good things happening this year. Yay! Um, well, um, I, I have to ask, uh, who, who is the new singer of Art of Anarchy? And I'm very sorry oh. for the oh, no, loss no. of Scott it's, Wyland again. Yeah, the it's, STP it's totally uh, uh, leader, um, we're all gonna miss him. Yeah. And we all appreciate um, what, you know, what he did for STP and what he did for Art of Anarchy. Before STP, he, uh, Velvet, his own music, I mean, he, he definitely left his mark and, and yeah. But yes, we, we, we do have a singer and, and in about two weeks or so, we're gonna announce who the new singer is. We'll, we'll uh, put that together. So, you know, hopefully uh, you can hear something as well and maybe we'll have something to show as far as that goes as well. If we get something done in time. But but in two weeks, we'll, we'll say who it is all together, we'll say, so yeah. And, and I have to ask, are you thinking of uh, doing any perform you know, performing any GNR, uh, you know, maybe some smaller venues for 
we we love you in DNR. Thank you. And, Thank um, you. It's totally cool that you left the back because you're an awesome musician, and I know I'm gonna hear great stuff anytime soon. Um, and I already have actually I've heard oh, is, a lot from. Bumblefoot is not just a musician; he's a wizard. Oh, we, 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 we don't know how that magic got in there, but we consider him a wizard. No. Us in the guitar community. Absolutely. No, I, I no, 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 no. Stop it. It's very true. It's very true. No, it's not. <laughs> um. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you. I mean, if I, uh, if I wanted to hear uh, some Guns N' Roses songs and I came up to you and was like, please. Cool. Um, you okay. set, you know, how would you feel about that? Like, oh, I'm so well, tired. You know what? No, no, you know what? We had, we had a wonderful time together, and I hope, I just hope it was good for the fans. I hope they they enjoyed those eight years that we had. Uh, I enjoyed them. I enjoyed all of you, and I thank you. Um, no, I'm I'm cool with jamming. Yo, the music is wonderful. Uh, and if people enjoy the music, that's what it's about. So, sure. I mean, I have no problem jamming. I, I love uh, getting together with a bunch of people and busting out something like Used to Lover or something like that and everyone taking rounds, jamming to it and everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, was it hard performing with the pyrotechnics? No, no, no. Just got to know where not to step uh -huh. so that you don't set yourself on fire or blow yourself yeah. up. Wow, yeah. wow. That's all. You got the, the orange tape. Do not cross okay. the orange tape. Okay. Uh, you yeah. know, we, there was always the greatest pyro guys that, that just had a million eyes and they, they were watching everyone and making sure that it was safe and they don't they don't hit it unless they see that that the coast is clear. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's how you do it. Oh, and yeah, I didn't yeah. know and I was a little worried if you my favorite players <laughs> on actually, you know, giant flames. And then that's what guys are doing these days. And the stage shows are incredible. But, they were, they absolutely. Yeah, yeah very big. So. so, yeah. Um, All right, it's, it's getting loud in here. I don't know how much more we can go. So well, I got to thank you. Thank you again, Ron. And, um, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm about, I want to say hey to Axel Rose, too, because I think he's cool as well. And um, I don't know if he'll be performing any in the future at all with that for hanging, you know, hanging out. Because you're East Coast and he's yeah. uh, West Coast for a oh. <laughs> It was a lot of work, wasn't it, Rod? Um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was a lot of everything, but that's yeah. life. It's, it's supposed to be. You know, if you're having a lot of everything, then, then you're really living, and that's what it's about. So, yeah. So good. Oh. Well, I wish them well. I wish them all well. I do. Super, super. Thank you so much for sharing. It's been really nice to speak to you. And, um, and you too. So Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good. We'll see Signing you off. We're going to hear more from you later. I know. Great. Yes, we'll do the Q&A. We'll be in there. So. Okay. Cool. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you. Thanks for watching. <laughs> okay. Great. Excellent. Oh, boy.